1237, welcome back. Ken Bruce, 700 WLW. Congress is about to hold hearings on vaping-related illnesses. Walmart is pulling out of the e-cigarette business completely after a rash of mysterious deaths. Eight deaths so far. The FDA announced that it was conducting a criminal investigation into vaping and vaping deaths and exactly why all of those are coming to pass. It seems to me that the most popular product on the market, Juul, is at the center of all of this. And at the center of all of this is a lot of unknown. Because um, there doesn't seem to be anyone that can, ta- can tell us right now that vaping leads to what? There doesn't seem to be any research. And it, it might also drag with it, if there is any litigation, it could also drag with us the cannabis industry uh, into any kind of potential, um, uh, any, any potential kind of uh, court action. It's, a, it's an industry that really and truly is in its infancy, and certainly in its infancy, it is in the middle of controversy. James Bell is an attorney. He's won a lot of big-time cases in his time, and he's standing by on the AcuteHearingCenters.com hotline to talk about this and what the fallout could be. And James Bell, welcome to 700 WLW. How are you on this glorious Saturday? I'm good. How are you? Well, thank you. I'm well, and thank you for joining us. Um... Well, let's talk about this. Uh, A lot of people seem to think vaping leads to, if not death, leads to a lot of different illnesses. But we don't seem to have the research on it yet as to what the connection is, do we? No, you you don't have uh, a connection just yet. But uh, there's some legal principles that might might be able to get a jury uh, to that conclusion. And what would those be? I mean, in your, in your estimation, in, in your uh, career, what would get a jury to, to, to a conclusion that there is a connection between vaping and illness, if not catastrophic, any kind of illness? How would it, how would it be presented to a jury? There's a, there's a principle called res ipsa locator. Don't ask me to spell it. But, <laughs> um, uh, it basically means the thing speaks for itself. And in other words, if, if the eight deaths, uh, if, if these folks are otherwise healthy and, these, and they all vaped and the simplest of explanations or the most logical of explanations would be the common denominator being the vaping, then a jury could conclude that you know, on a a preponderance of the evidence scale that that vaping can lead to catastrophic injuries uh, and and even death. So, the, I mean, this, 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 is, this is probably a logical step, but initially the, the most exposure would fall upon the companies who legally uh, di- uh, distributed vaping products, right? They would be the first companies that would be liable in this thing. Yes, I mean you, you, you've got a bunch of you've got a bunch of companies in the chain of the chain of distribution. You've got the manufacturer, mm-hmm. uh, you've got uh, uh, distributors, and you've got the retailers. And under product liability law, you can uh, it, clients can go after anybody in that in that chain. Mm-hmm. And so that's one of the reasons why Walmart's pulling them off off the shelf. They're just there's no certainty, and 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 they want to start shutting down their liability ASAP. Well, what about what about someone that obtained some of these products illegally? Let's just say you uh, you didn't go to you know Vaping Incorporated or whatever any of these stores may be. Let's just say you got it on the quote unquote black market. Those people disappear like cockroaches into the night, right? That's true. Absolutely. So how would you how would you be able to hold them liable or go after them? You, I don't think you could. I mm. think that would that would be. Uh, I don't think those are the kind of people that are going to get sued in, in these types of cases. Obviously, the the, the retailers, the manufacturers, um, the distributors are the ones that are more likely than not going to get sued because that's where the insurance money is. Yeah. For the, you know, for, for the victims and for the plaintiff lawyers. Uh, some of these states are making it illegal now. A, a New York state, uh, the governor in that state, um, 
is pushing to enact a statewide ban. The governor of this state, Ohio, is doing the same thing in his upcoming budget. Um, so I would guess, and again, I'm pursuing this from a legal standpoint, not necessarily from a legislative standpoint, but if governments are enacting legislation to ban e-cigarettes, flavored e-cigarettes, in this case in Ohio, that to me would add fuel to the fire to those who want to sue companies that are selling legally vaping products, right? That plays right into that wheelhouse, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely it does. Um, you know, and, and I, I'm not so sure that, that the, the legislature at this point ought to get involved, but there's always a rush to judgment in, mm-hmm. in these kinds of cases. So you're not, you, you're suggesting, you would suggest uh, state governments like Ohio, like I think Michigan, is uh, doing the same thing like New York State uh, enacted on Monday, you would suggest states not to do that? Yeah. I mean, this kind of reminds me of, I don't know if you remember the K2, uh, K2 Spice. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, this, this, you know, in that instance, I, I think it proved, K2 proved out to be you know, awful for people, uh, obviously. Uh, it didn't affect the cannabis industry. Um but uh, uh, in, in terms of, you know, California, Colorado, the, the, the states that, that have legalized it, Washington. Yeah. Uh, but uh, in, in this instance, I, you know, you, I think they need more concrete studies. On the one hand, it seems pretty logical that if you're burning propylene glycol through a battery and inhaling it, it's probably not going to be good for you. Right, right. Uh, and, and uh, on the other hand, you know, cigarettes are still legal. Everybody knows that, that cigarettes are, are bad for you. you know, at what point do people's choices come into, come into play here? Well, yeah, no, no I, I, I totally get that. I, I'm not sure that, you know, again, uh, just because one thing is legal and bad for you doesn't mean another thing should be legal and bad for you. I mean, I'm sure you under, understand that, that side of the argument. Um, I, I what what is uh, you said uh, we uh, in K two uh, everybody thought the cannabis industry would be exposed and as we talked about it was not but could this now have a residual effect if there is some sort of litigation that comes of this whether it's a class action suit whether it's one lawsuit anywhere could the cannabis industry medical and otherwise be exposed now and could people now say well I smoke dope. And now all of a sudden I got ill or I got sick or I got lung cancer and I, you know, I want to sue the cannabis industry. Because obviously you can't sue the guy that sold you the nickel, the, you know, the dime bag down on the street. You know, you, you can go after somebody legally now and that would be state governments. I mean, it could lead to that, could it not? Sure, absolutely. You know, I, I, you bring up an interesting point. I, I think at some point our society has become... Uh, inoculated to smoke, we're at least getting more and more that way. Inoculated to smoking marijuana and 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 you know, eating the gummies, et cetera, mm-hmm. and smoking cigarettes versus. I don't. I don't think the the, the uh, people have been inoculated to the idea of vaping uh, quite as much as they have. Uh, uh, marijuana. I mean, you, you, the vaping industry has obviously made a real hard play at, at trying to legitimize mm-hmm. and and, and it give, give themselves stature, uh, you know, as kind of an alternative to smoking. Now, but but I don't know how much people believe it and buy it just yet. Yeah, I don't. You know, and again, I don't know. I mean, I know there's been research done in other countries that say that it's a uh, it's a great alternative to smoking and those who vape say it's a great alternative to smoking and i but i also believe that this is going to be at least with the evidence that we have right now and you would know far better than me because this is what you do for a living james bell but it seems evident to me that there just isn't enough research out there for someone to bring any kind of litigation up against a legal vaping company at this point i i just I just sense it isn't there. It may be there eventually, but from what we know right now, I just don't think it's there at this point. Do you? 
Well, look, you can get a medical expert to say anything. So, <laughs> you know, and, and, and just lawyers can sue anybody for anything, and people can sue anybody for anything. So, so I mean, look, from at face value, uh, a 30,000-foot view, yes, I, I agree. I don't think you, you have the concrete research that, that e-cigarettes are a, a delivery vehicle cancer delivery vehicle or a delivery vehicle of some kind of toxic substances, substances that automatically lead to catastrophic injury or death. I don't think you have that evidence like you did in the, in this, the tobacco industry. Yeah. Having said that, um, that's not going to stop litigation. In fact, I mean, there, there's 30 or I think, I believe there's about 30 class action lawsuits going on right now. And the question becomes, are you going to be able to get, are there going to be medical experts out there that say that there is direct evidence, reliable evidence, to make the causal connection between vaping mm -hmm. and catastrophic injury and or death? And I believe the answer is going to be yes. Uh, uh, you're going to, there are going to be medical experts all over the place that, that are going to say that. And they're going to get up on the sand and they're going to say, you know, hey, look, by burning these certain chemicals, these elements, uh, they, they expose the lungs to A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. And then, you know, the next question is, you know, at what point is it people's choice? They knew what, they knew the ingredients was plastered all over the back of it. They decided to buy it and they would rather do that than go buy a pack of cigarettes. No. Yeah. Uh, James Bell, trial attorney. You can find him at jamesbellpc.com. By the way, it says here you won the largest verdict in the United States in 2017 among the top 10 largest verdicts in U.S. history. What verdict was that, James Bell? That was the Chase verdict against uh, J.P. Morgan Chase Bank. Oh, jeez. Uh, wow. Yeah, it was about $6 billion plus. Wow. Yeah, it, was, it was a big one. Yeah, well, it was a big one for you, too. That probably got you out of that Hyundai and right into that uh, Lamborghini, right? I wish. I wish. <laughs> they don't all play out like that. It but, didn't, huh? uh, uh, No, I still have the Mitsubishi. Okay. Well, that's good. They're more fuel efficient. <laughs> uh, James Bell, <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for your time and bringing a little clarity to this. We appreciate it. You got it. Have a good day.